Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Carolyn, and this channel is all about true crime, mystery, and anything abnormal. I highly recommend subscribing because this channel is definitely a vibe. Today's story takes place in Milford, Pennsylvania. On the afternoon of April 18th, 2016, Diane Walker contacted the police to report her daughter, Leanna, missing. Initially, police did not believe that Leanna was missing. They thought that she was a runaway. The reason police believed that Leanna was a runaway was the months leading up to the date that she went missing, Leanna had told family and friends that she had intentions of running away with her boyfriend. Leanna was 17 years old and she was dating 24-year-old Skye McDowell. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... None of Leanna's friends liked Skye. He was seven years older than Leanna and they all found him extremely creepy and did not think that he was good for Leanna. It wasn't just Leanna's friends who found Sky very bizarre. Sky's own friends found him very bizarre as well. One time he was standing around with a bunch of friends and someone said to him that he had bad breath. So Sky knelt down, picked up a handful of dirt and started eating it. Sky claimed the reason he did this was that the soil by eating it would kill any toxins in his body, which would cause him to have bad breath. And this is just the beginning of weird, strange beliefs that Sky has. On Facebook, Sky claimed to be a Rastafarian. In reality, Sky was the farthest thing from a Rastafarian you could imagine. My boyfriend grew up in Trinidad and he actually is Rastafarian. So while I was reading through Sky's different beliefs, I knew really quickly he was not Rastafarian. He just liked smoking the devil's lettuce. Rastafarian is a religion that believes that God resides within each and every one of us. The religion emphasizes natural living and certain dietary restrictions. And obviously with this religion or any religion, not everyone practices the religion in the same way, but most Rastafarians will not eat pork and they will not eat anything grown on a vine. And a very significant part of the religion is a vow that Rastafarians make to God to grow their hair and keep it in dreadlocks. Dreadlocks are in no way a fashion statement or something they wear that they think looks cool. It's a very serious vow they take. As well as Rastafarians believe smoking marijuana is a sacrament. So you're not going to find a Rastafarian who's like, ooh, let's get high and have fun. Woo hoo hoo. It's something they take very serious. And to Sky, he just wanted to get high and I think he just thought being Rastafarian was cool. But he was a clean cut kid who did not practice anything that followed Rastafarian guidelines other than smoking the devil's lettuce. His views on religion were very obsessive and very skewed to his own liking. He would post videos on Facebook that were hours long of him reading from books that he considered were the lost books of the Bible. He didn't like tattoos and he believed anyone who got a tattoo was banished to hell. So if tattoos are get you banished to hell, I'm in big trouble guys, big trouble. Sky also believed that men should marry very young and obviously marry very young women and they should have as many wives as they want. And I just want to be clear, all of these beliefs that he has, none of these beliefs are Rastafarian beliefs. He often quoted passages from the Bible 
that suggested that if a wife ever left her husband, the man had the right to murder her. Leanne Walker and Skye met in January 2016. Despite the seven-year age difference, the two began a relationship. Almost immediately, Skye became extremely possessive of Leanna. He would refer to her as his wife, and he wanted to control absolutely every aspect of her life. When they met, Leanna was a junior in high school. She was having a great time in high school. She had lots of friends. She had really good grades. And she was a very happy young girl. The problem was Sky could not stand the idea that Leanna was around boys all day long and he had no control over it. He believed that Leanna should only be around other males with his supervision. Really? Really, Sky? And unfortunately, Leanna was only 17 years old. And at 17, you can be so vulnerable to these types of relationships, especially when you get into a relationship with a significant age difference. I can remember being a teenager, dating guys in their 20s, and me and my friends, we all thought it was so cool. We have an older man, and the guys would always say, oh, well, you're so mature for your age. And the truth is, if you are 17 dating a man in his 20s, he doesn't think you're mature. He either thinks you're easy to manipulate, or women his own age won't tolerate his behavior. And that was definitely the case with Leanna and Skye. Skye would not let the school thing go. He would tell Leanna constantly that it drove him crazy that she was unsupervised all day around a whole bunch of boys. Skye convinced Leanna to drop out of high school to get a high school equivalency done online. By February, Skye found himself homeless and Leanna's mother, Diane, she was not fond in any way of Skye, but she did feel bad that he was homeless. Diane agreed to let Skye move into one of the bedrooms in their home and this was to be a temporary situation until he was able to get himself back on his feet. Over the next two weeks, Diane became very concerned about Skye's behavior. She started to see how much control he had over Skye. He had very erratic behavior and he would become violent and threatening quite often and over very small things. Then one day, Skye told Diane that if Leanna ever left him, he would burn the family's home down. So at this point, Diane is like, you gotta go. Like, this isn't happening. You need to get the hell out of our house. But Skye would not leave. Diane actually had to call the police to have them forcibly remove Skye from their home. By March, Skye's behavior had escalated to the point that he had to be admitted into a psychiatric unit at a hospital. He was in the hospital for almost a month, but I couldn't find any information of how he ended up in the hospital. Did he admit himself? Was he admitted against his will? And exactly why he was admitted. But we do know for the month of March, he spent the majority of that month in a psychiatric unit. Diane did not want Leanna to be in this relationship with Skye. But it's difficult when you have a child who's 17 to control who they see. So what Diane decided to do was to forbid Skye from being in the family home. She felt like that was part of what she could control 
because she was hoping this relationship would end. And she spoke a lot to Leanna about ending this relationship, but she, at a certain point, only had so much control over what her 17-year-old daughter did. She also didn't want to push Leanna away. One day, Diane was at work and her son called her, who was Leanna's younger brother, and said that Sky and Leanna were hanging out together in the family home. When Diane got home on April 18th, Sky and Leanna were long gone. Sky and Leanna had run away together. On the day that Leanna had disappeared, Sky changed his profile picture to a black and white picture of Leanna and Sky, and Sky was standing behind Leanna. He had his hands on her breast and he was kissing her cheek. Obviously, this is when Diana contacts the police to report her daughter missing. And as I had mentioned earlier, initially when she was reported missing, she was listed as a runaway. Within a couple of days, Diane was able to convince the police that her daughter would never have run away and not contacted her to let her know that she was okay and that she was safe. Diane also told the police that Skye had threatened the entire family's life many times. So police started searching nearby woods. They had helicopters, dogs, and obviously search parties walking, looking through the woods, seeing if they could find any sign of either Leanna or Skye. On April 26th, Skye had been spotted, spotted, <laughs> sorry, I can't speak today. He had been spotted in New Jersey because there was a warrant out for his arrest. It had nothing to do with Leanna. He had been breaking into homes and stealing during the eight days that they had been missing. So there was an arrest warrant for him for burglary. By the next day, Skye had made it back to Milford, Pennsylvania. He ran into a friend of his in a grocery store and he bragged that he was wanted by police and that he was camping with a girl in the woods. The friend thankfully contacted police immediately. Police quickly found Sky, and they chased and tased him and put handcuffs on him to arrest him. But there was no sign of Leanna. Sky told police that he had told Leanna if he ever didn't come back to the area where they were living in the woods, that she should run away. Police demanded that Sky show them where they had been camping in the woods. Sky led police to very dense woods near a llama farm that he had worked at previously. Sky knew the wooded area around the llama farm very well. He knew all of the trails and he knew where to hide. So Sky and the police are walking around the woods and Sky is claiming that he is taking them to show them where they had been camping at. But after a couple of hours, police realized that Sky was just walking them around in circles. When police mentioned this to Sky, he ran into the woods. But at this point, he's shirtless and he's handcuffed. I never understand when people are handcuffed, like he's in the middle of the woods. If you're handcuffed and you're running away, what the hell are you going to do? But Sky doesn't make rational choices. So he just ran into the woods handcuffed and shirtless for his big breakaway. At this point, state police got involved and helped with the search. And by noon the next day, Sky had been apprehended. Sky told police that him and Leanna had run away together and she was at the campsite where they had been living. He had gone into town to get food at the grocery store and he has absolutely no idea what happened to her or where she was. Sky still would not show the police where they had been camping. So the police kept on searching. They kept 
doing obviously a walking search through the area. They had dogs, helicopters, and unfortunately after three weeks, they did find the remains of Leanna. Leanna Walker had been killed, burned, and buried in a shallow grave. The coroner determined that Leanna had been killed by homicidal violence and that her body had been burned post-mortem. Sky just claimed he had no idea what had happened to Leanna. Sky claimed that Leanna had been hanging out with some bad guys and that these bad guys must have done this to Leanna. Like, come on. Skye remained in police custody for over a year before charges were finally filed against him. Skye had been charged with first degree murder, kidnapping, interfering with the custody of a child, and evidence tampering. Armed with a search warrant, police searched Leanna's Facebook messages and these were messages that she had messaged between her and Sky, and messages between her and her friends. And when police started going through these messages, they realized what a dark, depraved situation this was. The messages showed that Leanna was terrified of Sky, and he was extremely abusive to her. Just before Leanna had disappeared, she had messaged a friend and said that Skye had tried to kill her. There was another message where she told a friend that her and Skye were planning to flee to Jamaica to live some blissful life. Another message from Skye to Leanna confirmed that Skye had beaten Leanna very severely. Police also did an interview with a co-worker of Skye's named David Decker. David said that Skye had told him that if Leanna ever tried to leave him, he would kill her and then burn her body to cover the smell, which is exactly what he did. They also interviewed a cellmate of Skye's and the cellmate told the police that Sky had said that the blood was on Leanna's head because she would not change her ways. Like somehow Leanna was the problem. A prison guard was interviewed and he told police that Sky had a theory. His theory was that Leanna had been killed by a bear and then struck by lightning, and that's how her body got burned. Like, who's gonna believe that? Skye denied any involvement with Leanna's death until November 2018. This was two and a half years after Leanna's murder. The prosecutor offered a deal to Skye to plead guilty to third degree murder. Skye admitted that him and Leanna had run away together and they were living in the woods and their plan was to head to Jamaica to live out the rest of their lives there. And I would absolutely love to see what have happened if he made it to Jamaica and was claiming to be a Rastafarian. I think that part would have been quite entertaining. After several days of camping in the woods in Pennsylvania, Leanna told Skye she didn't want to go to Jamaica. She wanted to go home. And then Skye said, the abuser's anthem. If I can't have her, no one can. He then admitted that he had murdered her, burned her body, and buried her in a grave. In Pennsylvania, third degree murder is basically the equivalent of manslaughter in most other states. Skye was sentenced to 21 to 42 years in prison, which was the maximum sentence for third degree murder. 
And that is the end of today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe, give it a like if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.